Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. This passage is rich in meaning. I have studied it over the years and never ceased to be amazed that there is still more to be discovered. In January 2000, the meaning of this text broadened beyond anything I could have anticipated. This text was used by the preacher who gave the eulogy at my father's funeral. My dad, a man who loved God's word and studied it all of my life, had served in a Baptist church of my childhood as a Sunday school teacher and then as the Sunday school superintendent. His responsibility was to ensure that those teaching as well as those learning were gleaning much from the Bible for their lives. My mom and dad raised their five children in the church. Due to the limited social framework that was prevalent in the Jim Crow South where I was raised, we learned, played, and prayed within our own community. As we matured, my parents ventured out to purchase a home in a white neighborhood as opportunities for their professional development began to emerge. But unlike others, my parents deepened their commitment to the Lord and to the church. Dad would spend hours in the study of God's word. Once I matured and left Knoxville, I would return only to find that dad was busy still training Sunday school teachers and sharing the principles within God's word. Eventually, dad started meeting on a regular basis with a group of men at a local Crystal's restaurant. It's a chain known as White Castle in some parts of America and Crystal's in other parts of America, but they would meet there for breakfast and a discussion of God's word. They began to do so on a regular basis, and Dad would prepare handouts and lesson plans for those who attended. By the time of my father's death, I was still unaware of the impact he had on those who met with him. As we made final arrangements for the funeral, a group of men came by my parents' house They brought food and a card and a monetary gift to my mom. They signed the card, the Crystals Club. They learned from my dad. They witnessed his efforts to let them know of a God whose love is so transformative until even in the midst of a well-deserved retirement, The word of God, teaching it, studying it, sharing it, remained my dad's priority. So on that January day, I saw people who I did not know and heard words of thanks about my dad and the fruit of his teaching. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, It remains a single seed. Maybe retirement looked like doing things for yourself or after raising five children, surely you deserved a break, especially when one of them was me. (laughs) No, dad had sensed and heard a deeper calling. Some Greeks heard about Jesus. They came to find this one who healed and delivered and had the reputation 
of embracing the worst outcast. The hour had come for the one who entered this world to fall into the ground and die. Yet in his life, in his dying, in his steadfast example of God's love, we have a lesson today that gives us hope. You see, when Jesus died, much fruit came and keeps coming. When we die to our ideas, when we lose our lives and embrace God's path, our gaze shifts. We are drawn to the one in whom our lives will bear much fruit. As I stood in the graveyard on that day, a deep sense of peace came by. I realized that in response to the inquiry of the Greeks to Jesus, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. The answer is an eternal yes. Whether one is in the streets of Jerusalem, the shore of the Jordan, or the neighborhoods of Knoxville, the answer is an eternal yes. The grave does not have the final say. No wonder peace came by. Because, as we will celebrate in just a few weeks, that empty tomb Thanks be to God.